So both of you, even if you go to your physics folder with your name on it, you'll be able to find who I am as a learner and something. So again, this was like almost like the very first week of school. And then learner profile grid is something I just shared with you yesterday. And I'll talk about what we're doing with that. If you're wondering kind of what they look like, the who am I, who I am as a learner is this one here. You like highlighted or bolded or underlined things on here in terms of strengths and challenges. And then the learner profile grid is this blank one here. So one of the really big things that I kind of believe in and really want you to have the opportunity to opportunity for in this class is to really figure out what works best for you as a learner in terms of getting information and being able to express it in terms of being able to have that chance in high school, in my opinion, it's like one of the really important things we allow you to have here in terms of understanding your future. So when you end up doing whatever you do the next stage in your life, you may not have the chance to really explore and decide who you are. And I really think it's important to know that and be able to advocate that. And that's why we're gonna do this learner profile grid today. This is eventually gonna be um, a little bit later, we'll put it into your portfolio today. And this is gonna be another 20% of your final exam. So you did the, a lot of you did the other portfolio page, the projectile one yesterday. This is gonna be another page in your portfolio. So what we're basically doing, again, I really want you to be informed about the choices that you make. So I give you a lot of choices in terms of practice time. You'll actually have a different choice. You have two choices in terms of lecture tomorrow, because I'm gonna add a new choice in how you get information. If working at my pace doesn't really work for you. And then you always have choices in terms of assessment. So I really want you to be able to make informed choices whenever you're making a choice in terms of how you learn in this class and apply that to the rest of your life. So on this Who I Am as a Learner, you highlighted a whole bunch of different things in terms of how you like to access information in terms of strengths and challenges. Same thing in terms of engaging, either bolded or underlined things here. And then finally, how you show what you learn. So you've got a bunch of different choices here in terms of describing yourself as a learner. What you're gonna end up doing is in this learner profile, you're not gonna take all the ones you chose. What I want you to do in each of these for your strengths and challenges, I really want you to choose what you would consider your top two or three in each category. So again, on each page, you have strengths and challenges. You highlighted several of them. Choose your top two or three in each category and fill them in in the strengths and challenges. So I'm going to give you a little time to do that, and then I'll talk about the next step. So again, what you're doing on each of these pages you have some strengths and challenges that you highlighted. Choose what you would consider the top two or three in here and in here. And again, this one is for access. So take the top two or three here, top two or three here, and then just paste them in the strengths and challenges for access. Next page, do the same thing for engage. And then the next thing do for express. So I'll give you a little time to fill out these ones here. And then I'll talk about the other blocks once we're there. So take a couple of minutes. Again, we're just filling in this first part here, strengths and challenges. And again, they're coming right from here. And if you want to copy and paste them, that is perfectly fine.
And again, if you're looking for those two files, again, who I am as a learner and learner profile grade. So again, you have three different pages here. Just taking two or three from each column and putting them in there for the access, the top two or three, and engage in the top two or three in terms of express. So again, for the preferences and needs section, you're basically just saying kind of again, things based on your strengths and challenges that would really help you meet those needs. So the preferences or needs are based on your strengths and challenges. Let me explain the last couple of sections, then I'll give you a whole bunch of work time to kind of like finish this. I don't want to say a whole bunch, but some work time to finish it up. And then eventually we'll get caught up with the second part of class. So the last couple of sections here in the learner profile grid. So you're just going to fill out the orange part. We're, never, we're not going to do the purple part until the end of the course but what you're doing in this yellowish part here is there's a couple of different words there's a series of different words here what you want to do is only leave the ones that apply to you so delete any word that you don't think describes you at all if you want to add other words you're more than welcome to but looking at the words there if it, you don't feel it describes you in a word just delete that and then leave the ones that do the next part here, interests, talents, and passions. Just a little bit about yourself in terms of your interests outside of school or even extracurriculars or any passions that you have. We kind of did that on a video page before, but just briefly talk about that. And then aspirations would be after high school, what do you hope to do? Or if you're even thinking about a future career and you know what it is, just what is your idea of a future career? Do not feel the need to write these in sentences at all. It's perfectly fine if you kind of just leave them as statements. That is perfectly fine. All right. After that, after you've completed it, the next step is going to be to create a page in your portfolio, just called Learner Profile, and then add that to the page. So, in this learner profile page, the only thing you need to do is just embed that file from your drive. So again, really the learner profile, you don't even need this header here. It's just going to have this in there. Again, the purple part will do at the end of the course but in January. So all you need to do is when you go to make this new page in your portfolio, just on the insert menu, if you just click drive, you'll be able to find it in your Google Drive and just insert it. All right, so what I want to do is give you some time to take care of that. So let's say about, uh, let's see where we are at about 
835. So you can tell 835. If you get done early, that is perfectly fine. Just relax and go on your phone or do whatever you need to do. So again, you're going to finish up the green and the yellow. And then you'll make a page in your portfolio just called Learner Profile and add it to there. So I'll turn up the lights. Unless you guys, do you guys like it dark or do you like light? You like it dark? All right. If you do finish today, you can turn it in. And again, uh, we'll keep on, I'll give you more time to work on this. I'm not really stopping you. You go to Canvas and go to Learner Profile page here or over here, Final Exam Learner Profile page. You can just turn the link in. And again, you only had to basically fill in the green and the yellow and put it on the portfolio page and turn it into Canvas. So again, this is the next page in your exam. So about me, we already did very, very early in the year. Motion unit, we did at the end of last month. Projectile motion unit was yesterday and learner profile pages today. So still give you some more time to work on this another 10 minutes. Again, if you do get done, just feel free to relax for a little bit.
So on the side here, if you're looking to put a file like this into a page, instead of worrying about the themes, if you just click on Google Drive here, and what I would recommend, you can either search for it, find it in your folder. So I think the easiest thing to do, if you click on the side here, if you just click on recent, because that was the most recent one you were dealing with, click on recent here, it'll just pop up as your most recent one. So again, once you make the page for learner profile from the insert menu here, so again, you were on pages probably to make it, add the new page from the insert, click on Google Drive over here. Instead of worrying about searching for it, since you were just editing it, you click on the arrow until you get to recent. You can double click on it, but if you click on it once, it'll say insert down on the bottom, and then you'll be able to put it in there. And then to finally submit it, you again can just copy this link and then head over to Canvas. And again, it's this assignment here, learner profile page, or again, it's probably in your to-dos over here if you haven't done it yet. In about two more minutes, I'll talk about the second thing we are doing today.
So for the next thing, our next unit's on something called forces. And we'll actually take our first set of notes tomorrow. But what I would like you to do in your Google Drive, this is not something we're going to finish today. I'm going to have you find a slideshow called Cut the Rope. So look for that. It was shared with you yesterday. One of the things, again, we're setting forces in our next unit, which are basically just push and pulls. And one of the forces we've studied so far is gravity. We didn't really call it a force necessarily, but it's one of the important forces we're going to be looking at. Another force we're looking at is something called tension force that basically occurs in strings and cables, pulls things and holds things up. And one of the best examples for tension forces is in the game Cut the Rope, if you've ever played it before. On the second slide, there's a link to get it on your Chromebook or your device. So if you click here on the link, it should take you to a tab where you can add the app. So you're gonna wanna add, it, add the app. If for some reason it's not working for you, it's perfectly fine if you wanna download it on your phone and play it on your phone. But this is a quick way to kind of like add it to your Chromebook, just so you can do it on there and take some easy screenshots for the little lab we're going to do. So if you've never played Cut the Rope before, essentially what it is, it's a game where you're trying to get this candy to our little friend named Nam. So there's a bunch of different levels and I'll explain specifically what we're going to want you to do. So again, you want to get the candy into little Nam's mouth or Om Nam. So right now, if you think about it, there's gravity that's pulling the candy down. And the one thing that's holding it up is this string. So just cut the rope to give him his candy. And you're not too worried about you getting all the stars unless you're really all into getting stars. But what you're going to end up doing is on any level, you're going to take two different screenshots, one at the very start and one after you've cut one of the ropes and where you've kind of changed some of the forces. So if I go to the second level here, so there's three different ropes on this candy right now. So I would take a screenshot at the start and then after I cut one rope, I take another screenshot. So essentially what I have are two screenshots here. Now on top of these screenshots, what I would do is draw in something called a force diagram or draw arrows to show the forces on the candy. So there's always going to be the force of gravity. That's always going to be one of the forces you're going to draw. So make an arrow with gravity going down. It's up to you if you want to use this shape tool up here to make an arrow, or if you just want to do an arrow with the line tool. But once you add that arrow for gravity, just label it FG for the force of gravity. And we'll go over all the different forces in our notes tomorrow. And then draw an arrow to show which ropes you think are holding it up. So whatever rope you think is holding it up, or if there's more than one, call it FT for tension force. So if you don't think a rope is helping hold it up, you don't have to label it at all. So you're just labeling the force of gravity on the candy, it's always down, and any rope that you think is holding it up, and the direction it's pulling it in. So Right here, since this rope is kind of, looks like it's at an angle, I drew the force at a little bit of an angle like this. So 
after the notes tomorrow, we'll come back and do a little bit more with it. What I want you to do is just do these different levels here. Level three, seven, eight, 11, and 12. And then I ask you to find three other levels to do. So what you're doing again, you're doing two different screenshots, one at the start, and one after you cut one or maybe two ropes. And you're just labeling the force of gravity first, always going down, and then any other ropes you think that are holding it up. So in other words, this rope right here, if I cut this rope, it had no effect at all. So I would say at that point, it probably isn't providing any tension at all. So if I revisit this level, so if I cut this rope and this rope, they don't do anything. So right at the very start, gravity, oops, gravity is going down. And the only force that's holding it right now, or the only rope that's holding it up is this one right here. So if you don't think a rope is holding it up, you don't have to label it as one of the tension forces. But eventually we'll talk more about tension forces in the notes tomorrow, and we'll kind of revisit this. So what I want you to do is do those different levels. Take a couple of screenshots of each level and then try to label the forces that you think are acting on the candy. So gravity is always gonna be down, always gonna be down. If you're having issues with getting it on your device, perfectly fine if you want to do it on your phone and take some screenshots with that and then put them in. But otherwise, those are the two things I'd like you to work on today. So the learner profile page and then the cut the rope. Eventually you'll get to a slide Slide that says, slide 10 says, um, keep adding three more levels with diagrams, but then slide 11 says, eventually, so actually I should have a slide in there that says, stop. Actually, don't worry about slide 11. I'll say stop once you're done with slide 10. So slide 11, 12, 13, we'll talk about tomorrow. So just do through slide 10, where you're doing levels and adding arrows. So don't worry about slide 11 and 12. Were you guys able to get cut the roof on your Chromebooks? Okay, good. Good. Just wanted to make sure they didn't block it.